This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Got some big breaking news to share with you with the recession just about here because of two negative GDP quarters. What is being done about it? What help are we going to get? Well, I'll go over the latest stimulus articles like this. Biden is still sending relief checks to families to deal with inflation. And will you get a new stimulus check to help with inflation? I'll go over the latest $450 and $1,000 stimulus checks that are being sent out. I'll give you the latest video clip from Bernie Sanders talking about the need for other type of stimulus provisions that need to go out right now and i'll give you some other more important updates as well hope you're having a terrific thursday if you appreciate the fact-based fast-based updates hit the like button down below and i'm picking the winners for the 200 dollars checks later on in this video so stay tuned for that but first u.s economy just had a second quarter of negative growth is it in a recession the technical version is yes we are in a recession waiting to hear uh some more news later but take a look at this video clip right here explaining more. We're waiting on the first reading of the second quarter GDP. It's going to be out imminently. Markets right now are down going into the number. Uh, the uh, number is coming up very soon, and Edward Lawrence is going to have it. Uh, it is uh, the GDP for the second quarter, and this is the first reading which will get revised. Edward Lawrence has the number. Yeah, this is a negative number for the second uh, quarter. First reading, 0.9%. It's decreased 0.9%. So then again, the first quarter estimate, final estimate was 1.6% decrease. Now we have a first estimate of the second quarter decrease of 0.9%. So if you look at the common definition of a recession, that is a recession for the first half of this year going back. Now, the Federal Reserve chairman even said yesterday, you have to take this with a grain of salt. He said it's going to be revised. But you can still look at the trend that is there. Atlanta Fed GDP now said the estimate would be a little worse than this. It came in a little bit better, but again, still a negative number going forward. Now, the decrease in real GDP reflected private sector inventory investment and re uh, residential fixed investment, federal spending, state and local government spending, and non-residential fixed investment that were partly offset with increases from exports and personal consumption expenditures. Uh, imports were subtracted from that calculation there again. So, we are going to hear from the uh, president later on today about the economy. We're going to hear from the Treasury Secretary in a rare news conference that she's going to have uh, later on today. But again, we have now two negative quarters, uh, the second one estimate uh, of negative GDP growth. And that is a common definition of a recession. Maria? So you heard there, technically, we are in a recession. That's the common definition of a recession, two negative quarters. So what is being done about it? Uh, later on, we're supposed to hear from President and Biden and Janet Yellen about more details. So I'll report on that when it comes out later. Uh, but for now, also some other big news here, Manchin and Schumer agreed to vastly pared back version of Build Back Better. Spoke about this earlier. So they reached a deal for this reconciliation deal, which still has a long way to go with that other, uh, uh, Merrick, uh, I forgot the name of it. It's been so long, but the third stimulus check package, that bill was done through reconciliation and that took forever to go through. So we'll still see if it is going to go through. We don't even know the text of the bill yet, but I'll keep you updated on that. When it comes to Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders says if the U.S. could spend $76 billion on computer chips, it could pass Medicare for all. So Bernie Sanders, not too happy with the passing of the chips bill in the Senate, still hasn't passed the House yet, but he thinks that type of money and other things should go towards Medicare for all, child tax credit, more stimulus provisions. Take a look at what Bernie Sanders has to say about all that. Told that because of the deficit, that at a time when we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on earth, we cannot extend the child tax credit to help working parents and substantially reduce childhood poverty. At a time when over 600,000 Americans are homeless and some 18 million families are spending half of their incomes on the high cost of housing, we are told over and over again that because of the deficit, we cannot build the low-income and affordable housing we desperately need. At a time when millions of senior citizens in this country desperately need help to go to a dentist because their teeth are rotting in their mouths. They can't afford hearing aids. They can't afford eyeglasses. We are told that we cannot afford to expand Medicare because of the deficit. 
at a time when the average family in this country is spending $15,000 a year on childcare, an unimaginable amount of money for a working family, we are told that we cannot reform a dysfunctional child care system because of the deficit. At a time when some 70 million Americans are uninsured or underinsured, we are told that we cannot guarantee health care to all Americans as a human right, like virtually every other major country does, because of the deficit. In other words, Mr. President, despite the fact that half of the people in our country today are living paycheck to paycheck, despite the fact that half of our seniors live on incomes of 25000 or less, despite the fact that we have more income and wealth inequality today than we've had in 100 years, where three billionaires own more wealth than the bottom half of America, despite all of that, whenever it comes to protecting the needs of low-income or working families, I hear over and over again, we just cannot afford to do that because of the deficit. Well, Mr. President, guess what? All of that profound and serious concerns about the deficit fades away when it comes to providing a $76 billion blank check to the highly profitable microchip industry with no protections at all for the American taxpayer. Somehow, the deficit is of great concern when it comes to providing help to working families, to low-income Americans, to children, to seniors. But it's not a concern when you provide massive corporate welfare for enormously profitable multinational corporations. I guess, Mr. President, when the semiconductor industry spends $19 million on lobbying this year alone, and when Intel spends $100 million on lobbying and campaign contributions over the past 20 years, when that industry says, jump, the response from Congress is, how high? That is what a political system dominated by big money looks like. The people in this country who desperately need help can't get it. The corporations that are making huge profits and the CEOs who are making exorbitant compensation packages get everything they need and more. In other words, it appears that the deep concerns about the deficit are rather selective. Now, Mr. President, after I finish my remarks, I will give my colleagues a chance to prove me wrong. I'll be raising a budget point of order against this bill because it increases the deficit by over $79 billion, with $76 billion of that money going to the microchip industry with no strings attached. Mr. President, let me be very clear. There is no doubt that there is a global shortage of microchips and semiconductors, which is making it harder for manufacturers to produce the cars, cell phones, household appliances, and electronic equipment that we need. And that is why I fully support efforts to expand U.S. microchip production. But the question we should be asking is this. Should American taxpayers provide the microchip industry with a blank check of over $76 billion at a time when semiconductor companies are making tens of billions of dollars in profit right now and paying the head of Intel some $170 million dollars a year in compensation? And I think the answer to that question is a resounding no. That is why, at the conclusion of my remarks, I will be asking unanimous consent to attach an amendment to this legislation. This amendment is simple and straightforward. 
It would prevent microchip companies from receiving grants under this legislation unless they agreed not to buy back their own stock. Not complicated. Now, this is rather amazing. This is really quite incredible and tells you where we are as a nation politically. Over the past decade, semiconductor companies have spent nearly $250 billion, 70% of their profits, not on research and development, not on building new microchip plants in America, what this bill is presumably about, but on buying back their own stock to enrich their wealthy shareholders. Let me repeat, the industry that is asking for $76 billion of corporate welfare today over the past decade spent $250 billion, 70% of their profits, not on research and development, not on building new microchip plants in America, but on buying back their own stock to enrich their wealthy stockholders. Apparently, they just couldn't find $76 billion of their own money to invest in new plants in America. They need the taxpayers of this country to do it for them. Do any of my colleagues really believe we should allow microchip companies to receive $76 billion in taxpayer assistance without a ban on stock buybacks? Under my amendment, microchip companies would not be allowed to receive taxpayer assistance unless they agreed that they would not repeal existing, existing collective bargaining agreements and would remain neutral in any union organizing effort. Do any of my colleagues believe that we should be handing out corporate welfare to profitable corporations who are engaged in busting unions? Under my agreement, microchip companies would not be able to receive $76 billion in taxpayer assistance unless they agreed not to outsource jobs overseas. Now, I heard my colleague from Indiana speak a moment ago about the crisis in the microchip industry, how we are producing a smaller and smaller amount, but he forgot to mention, somehow forgot to mention, that over the last 20 years, the microchip industry has shut down over 780 manufacturing plants and other establishments in the U.S. and eliminated 150,000 American jobs while moving most of its production overseas. In other words, what taxpayers are doing are rebuilding an industry that was destroyed by the industry itself by going abroad in search of more profit. Under my amendment, microchip companies would be prevented from receiving taxpayer assistance unless they agree to issue warrants or equity stakes to the federal government. Now, I happen to believe in industrial policy. I think it makes sense for the government and private sector to be working together when it is mutually beneficial. If private companies, however, are going to benefit from generous taxpayer subsidies, $76 billion, the financial gains made by these companies must be shared with the American people, not just wealthy shareholders. Does that sound really unreasonable? If these guys are going to make huge profits based on this investment, don't you think maybe the taxpayers of this country who gave them the money might be able to get some of those benefits back? What are your thoughts there? Do you agree with Bernie Sanders? Do you disagree with Bernie Sanders? Let me know your thoughts on that. Let's get into some stimulus news here. So Biden is still sending relief checks to families to deal with inflation. So, whoops. So uh, basically, this is uh, Biden's stimulus helped pad state budgets across the country. Now more are channeling booming budgets and issuing so-called relief checks. Governor DeSantis is using federal aid to issue one-time relief payments for the poorest Floridians. So basically, what this article is talking about is all the stimulus money that went out is basically being used for uh, inflation checks or inflation relief checks. So to see how the money is being spent. You can see here, I'll zoom in a little bit. 
you can see here the states with inflation stimulus programs, these are all the different states, I think it's 18 at the moment, that are sending out different types of stimulus checks. And there's also like smaller cities and counties that are doing it as well. But so stimulus checks are going out. And I guess technically it's from President Biden because all that federal stimulus money got funneled into states and the states could use the money however they want. Some are using it as stimulus checks, some are not. So if you see your state here, uh, just stay tuned to the channel. I'm always giving the stimulus check updates for different states. Uh, but why w will you get a new stimulus check to help with inflation? So in terms of the federal stimulus check, it's in Congress that has been considered, but at the moment, everything is slowed down. But now that we're technically in a recession, I think we're more likely to get a federal general stimulus check as we did in the past two recessions that happened 2001 and 2008 stimulus checks were sent out so if we do enter a recession things get really bad I think the chances of a recession stimulus check is much more likely and then uh, two direct payments worth $450 and $1,000 coming from $1 billion pot that must be spent by exact date so in Florida uh, it's using the uh, their share of the American Rescue Plan. That's what it was. I forgot the name of it earlier on in the show, worth $450 and $1,000. So what's going on here is struggling households uh, will receive $450 for each child under their roof to provide them with some financial relief. And then for the $1,000, first responders using federal aid were also given as a reward for their valiant work in the form of a $1,000 cash bonus in the spring. So it looks like Florida uh, giving out quite a bit of stimulus checks, the $1,000. They also gave $1,000 to teachers, $450 for kids. So for Florida, having a Republican governor, uh, pretty generous with uh, stimulus checks and stimulus money going out. Um, but yeah, that is all the news that I have for now. I'm going to give you Bella's tip of the day, and then I will let you know the winners of the $200 checks. Hi guys, this is Bella, this is the tip of the day, and I am going to be telling you that you always need to have fun at the playground or at anything. You need to have fun with yourself and enjoy yourself how you are right now, because the day after, it won't be around, so you have to enjoy the day first. Bye! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and thank you for being a part of the Wise Flies community. This is probably one of my favorite videos of the month because then I get to give back to the Wise Flies community, give back to my subscribers and thank you for being a part of everything that's been happening. Uh, it's been a crazy journey over the past few years. I just want to thank you for being a part of it and making it all possible. So to do so, I'm giving out $200 checks. So we are in the back end of my channel right here. And so it was, uh, where's the video? It was over on the 18th, right? Yeah, okay, so this one, I'm gonna go to pick a winner. Uh, yeah, pick a winner. All right, so for this, you had to write the word happy. And, you know, I just wanna kinda make things a little lighter at the end of the videos, which is why I share uh, my daughter's tip of the day, show some happy moments of us in the family. So although I'm giving you negative news, I just want to at least end it on a good moment, uh, which is what I think probably news channels should do too. Just don't want it to be completely depressing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to pick, pick a winner. And yeah, uh, so this is completely random. So it's going to pick a winner at random. All right, so Marty Ray Johnston, uh, happy. Yeah, congratulations, Marty Ray. Um, so yeah, for Marty Ray and all the other winners, I have my contact information down in the description below. Reach out to me. I'm just going to verify a few things to make sure it's actually you. And then I'll send you that $200 check. So the next winner is Sandra Anderson. I am happy to be alive one more day and for the many blessings that God has blessed me with. Uh, that's a great response. I love that. Congratulations, Sandra. And the next winner is Disney Fun Reviews. Happy that Wiseflies gives critical information, especially for Social Security recipients. 
Well, thanks for that, and congrats to you. Uh, Disney Fun Reviews, I'll have to check that out if that's a channel or not. But yeah, congratulations to all the winners. I'll do this again next month. Thank you for being a part of it all, and uh, thanks for yeah being a part of the community. I have a bunch of other YouTube channels that I like to share as well. I have one that's on positivity, motivation, that's Wise Vibes. I have another channel that uh, personal finance. I haven't really updated that one in a while. A product review channel wise buys and then my newest passion pickleball so wise pickleball channel if you want to check out the latest video on any of those channels you could click right up here and i'll see you in the next video take care be safe thank you for watching